Start your game development journey in your mobile with this step-by-step -step course. We'll be creating this amazing game using the Dodge Mobile, in which the player has to dodge some enemies. It seems quite simple, but anyway, you'll learn a lot. This video is just one part of the full course, but you can find the full course in the description down below. Let's start. Okay, in our main scene, firstly, we will have to add some other notes. Firstly, we are going to be adding a timer. Yes, it's basically a timer, okay? This first timer, I'm going to name it MOV Timer. This is going to control how often mobs spawn. And we're going to set um, the wait time to 0.5 seconds. Then we will need a second timer. In this case, this is going to be the score timer. To increment the score every second so of course as this will increase the score every second the wait time will be one second finally a third timer we will be using is gonna be named start timer and well this score uh, start timer uh, the wait time will be 2 and we will also set the um, the one shot property of start timer to on the one shot option uh, basically manages that when the timer uh, finishes isn't gonna start over and over again once it finishes it's not gonna start again also we will need another node that isn't gonna be a timer this time, it's gonna be a marker 2D. And as you can see, it's just a generic position. We are gonna name it start position like this. And uh, we are gonna set the uh, position, okay, to uh, 240. 450 yeah i sorry this is 240 450 okay the main node will be spawning new mobs and we want them to appear at random location on the edge of the screen in order to do this we will need to add another node in this case it's gonna be a path to v okay and well this node we're gonna be using it to um, create some uh, the, the mobs, the enemies uh, around the edges of our screen. We're gonna also rename it to Mob Path. As you can see here, when you select the Mob Path, uh, we can see some options on this section. The one that let's say is important to us is this one. And that is gonna be used to add some points in our path so in order to create like let's say the most perfect possible path we're gonna use these two options that they are basically uh, they use grid snap and use smart snap and now we are gonna create our path and uh, we want we want to draw the path in clockwise order or our mobs will spawn pointing outwards instead of inwards, okay? So, uh, having selected our mob path and these two options uh, on, we're gonna click here on this uh, green uh, button and we're gonna click here, okay, to add a point, then a second point uh, right here okay then we will need a third point okay and this point this time is gonna be right here and a fourth point right here okay and then finally we will click here to close 
uh, the path okay and as you can see you should have your path like this we can now disable these two options now that the path is defined we will need to add in our move path a path follow to the this one this node will automatically rotate and follow the path as it moves so we can use it to select the random position and direction along the path in our main node we're gonna attach a new script again empty and this time we're gonna create an export bar using that symbol and we're, we're gonna name it mob scene then uh, we will have to say that this is a packed scene again using these symbols it's very important the spelling and basically when we go back to the main node we can see here in the inspector mob scene and we can um, quick load our mob scene okay so basically in this variable we have our mob scene stored uh, that we're gonna be using uh, then to instantiate it okay also we will need here a score variable now we're gonna select our player node and as you can see here we see the hit signal we had created before we want to make a new function named game over which will handle what needs to happen when a game ends so here we will connect the signal but before connecting it we have to set the receiver method and in this case we are we aren't gonna name it on player hit um, we're gonna type here first we are, we are gonna erase everything and here we're gonna type game underscore over okay and this should look like this then connect to our main node and as you can see here we have the game over function now on our game over we're gonna call our score timer and we're gonna stop it okay then we will also call the move timer and we are also gonna stop it finally we will also have to create a new function in this case it's gonna be a new game function and basically here when there is a new game we're gonna set our score to zero and we're gonna call our player start function that we have created before okay and here we're gonna give the start position dot position finally here we're gonna start our a start timer and well so that you remember um, we have in our player script a function named start that basically takes a position as a parameter and then sets our player position to the position given as a parameter so it's basically um, that in this line what we are doing is calling the start of our player and then the position at which we will move our player will be our start position dot position which means this position right here okay now let's connect our timeout signals in all the three timers so timeout here timeout here and time out here of course check that you're connecting all the signals to the main script so on our on score timer timeout basically we're gonna increment our score by one and then on our on start timer timeout we're gonna um, start firstly the move timer And also we will need to start our score timer then in our 
on move timer timeout method we will create a move instance pick a random starting position along the path 2d and set the move in motion so firstly we will need to create a new instance of the move scene in order to do this we will create a variable named move that is gonna say our mob scene dot instantiate basically what this line is gonna be doing here is to select here this button and here instantiate our mob okay like this but of course as you can see uh, it doesn't have a position or something like that so we will need to choose a random location on our path so we will need another variable named a uh, move spawn location and uh, this is gonna be equal to get node we will get the move path and then we will also need to get the um path follow to the but before doing that uh, we should actually rename it to a uh, move spawn location okay like this so here we will write move spawn location now we'll create a uh, we will say that our move spawn location dot progress ratio will be equal to rand f okay i'm gonna explain this in a second now we will need another variable to set the mob's direction perpendicular to the path direction and how do we do so we create another variable named direction and we're gonna set and we're gonna assign it to our mob spawn location dot rotation plus pi divided by 2 then we need to set the mob's position to a random location so our mob.position will be equal to our mob spawn location we have assigned earlier now we will also need uh, to add some randomness to the direction in order to do that we're gonna say that our direction plus equal run f range minus pi divided by 4 and then uh, pi divided by 4 and finally we will set our move rotation to our direction the next step is to choose the velocity for the move. In this case, we're gonna create a new variable, velocity, and uh, this is gonna be a vector to variable. And again, it's gonna be a run f range to get a float number between the range that we're gonna give it. In this case, it's gonna be uh, 150 and 250 on the x value and on the y is just gonna be zero finally we're gonna set our well we don't modify the y uh, direction because we only want to move it um, horizontally and then we will set our move.linear velocity to our velocity that we have created Above, dot rotate you that requires an angle as you can see and the angle is gonna be the direction and finally we will need to spawn the mob by adding it to the main scene so add child mob so you may be asking why pi here pi here and in some other parts of the code 
in functions requiring angles without uses radians, not degrees. Pi represents a half turn in radians, about 3.1415. Now in our ready function that I'm gonna create over here, I'm gonna call the new game function. So uh, now let's try out our scene. As you can see, we can move and we have all the enemies coming right here that we have to dodge, obviously. Um, okay, basically, I'm gonna collide with one and you're gonna see that our game, uh, I think, is gonna crash. Yes, uh, because we have to uh, modify some things. Something important uh, that you also have to consider is that here on our mob timer timeout, that is actually our mob spawner, uh, I think I modified something before playing because I misspelled some things or I got confused with some functions, symbols, etc. So you can just copy uh, this code right here. You can take a screenshot or whatever and check that everything is just like this. Also here in our game over, I misspelled move timer, so I, I put move time and it should be move timer. Okay, let's try again. Here we have the enemies, we have to dodge them. Okay, they are collided and as you can see, everything is working fine because I collide with it and, and there are no more mobs spawning. Thanks a lot for watching, remember to like and subscribe for more content. You have the link to watch the full course in the description down below. See you!